glad to be here. So I'm going to talk about uh, three things, a little bit about NVI, a little bit about the context of these advancing codes and future codes, and then how, uh, how this works in terms of programmatic development. Um, MBI is a, is a, uh, uh, a small, um, uh, basically a, a think tank type organization. We're located in the state of Washington with three offices. We've uh, really quadrupled in size in the last six years. Um, and what we uh, really do is focus on near-term energy efficiency and policies to, uh, to support them. We have sponsors, um, mostly national and, and regional and, and utility sponsors, um, including here in the, in the uh, Midwest, uh, especially ComEd and the Energy Center, with Energy Center Wisconsin we work closely with. But we do have close relationships with DOE, uh, California Energy Commission, the Green Building Council, um, and uh, Pierre, he's a California research organization. Um, and like I said, uh, our board of directors is strong uh, nationally. Um, both the Energy Center and ComEd have a uh, representative on our board. Um, we work with the public benefit agencies uh, like Efficiency Vermont, Efficiency New Brunswick. Uh, we do work with the, uh, with the province of uh, British Columbia and, um, and, uh, and several states. And, uh, and we do a lot of work on the Title 24. So I, I want to give you a sort of an overview of how we see programs and um, innovation and codes uh, interplay. And so, and really we've seen this goal of uh, net zero by 2030. And, and really, you know, this is actually prepared for the state of California because that's actually been approved by the California Public Utility Commission. And so you see uh, a, a basic step uh, as the base code goes down. Um, below that, the blue line is really the reach code, which has been described as a as the next cycle code, and that literally is one step ahead. Um, but beyond that, we have more um, R and D and near term research, and and that would be the green the green line. And of course, we've already seen the, the construction of some net zero buildings in the dozens, I'd say, um, and that's um, that would be the, the innovators and, and the Rocky Mountain Institutes, etc. So we see all these as 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 really a public policy goal and, and paths to get there and, and then the interplay of those. What today what we're going to really be talking about is just the relationship of the REACH code or, um, or, or utility program, which would be one cycle ahead of a base code um, as the base codes progress. Um, and, and in particular, we're going to talk about the, this cycle and the next cycle, which would go from pretty much 2012, 2009 as a base code to 2012 as a reach code or next cycle code, and then beyond the 2015 cycle. And that's really where we're going to be concentrating today. Um, and, and as we've been hearing, you know, there's this interplay between the, the raising baselines for the energy um, efficiency programs at utilities, and as the codes have been accelerating in energy savings, this puts more stress on, on, the, on the savings attainment uh, commitments within the uh, utility programs. But on the other hand, there's the opportunity because the utility programs are out there, they're already implementing programs, and they have the contacts with the, with the building industry and, uh, and support structures to implement programs around codes. So we think this, this is a perfect match, and, and a lot of our policy option, a lot of our policy um, uh, work now is done on, on making this interplay between utility programs and advancing codes, in addition to working on next generation codes. Um, and, and it did not stop the 2012 IECC, um, which did grow out of the first core performance program, which was originally the benchmark, which you just heard about. Um, but we plan on working towards the next cycle of IECC and, and beyond. Um, so what we want to describe here at, um, We've seen the, bottom, the underlying graph before. I want to lay on there uh, the, the advancements over time of the base code and, and the reach code or next cycle programs. Um, and as we heard that that core performance version 1.1, which grew out of benchmark, um, during the time of the 2009 IECC, um, was turned into the 2012 um, IECC after it had been written into the into the um, Massachusetts stretch code, which I want to acknowledge uh, Jonah and Mathis Associates because uh, we were the two contractors that, that took on the job of, of writing the Massachusetts stretch code. 
and, and, and you can't underestimate the work of the previous work of uh, Isaac and, and, and Neep in making that um, actually happen. That was a, that was a really underappreciated development in the, the development of national codes to, to have that Massachusetts dress code uh, be adopted through the Green Communities Act. Um, that was truly an accomplishment. Um, but, but as you see at this stage, the 2012 ICC has been published, but it has not been adopted. Literally, most of the states are working on a 2009 ICC basis. So between the 2009 and 2012, you'll see there's a large energy savings potential. And that is where the core performance guide that we are producing is going to be adopted to be um, based and completely aligned with the 2012 code. So there will be a 2012 <laughs> supplement which will make the 2012, uh, will make the core performance a 2012 compliant program. And that's what we're going to be we're working with several utilities now trying to, to have them implement a, a energy efficiency program that trains and educates and builds supplier networks for the next cycle code, which not only allows them to obtain credit for that um, development of code, potentially depending on the commission, but also um, makes that code more easily adopted as the state goes forward, as, as, as the community becomes familiar with it and the, and the supply network becomes um, very aware of it. Um, and, and like I said, um, we are also now working on our version 2.0, which will be more, more related to, we've heard about the um, operation of maintenance. It, it, a lot of our research shows that the development of the codes only goes so far, and what features go into a building is a lot about the operations and maintenance of the building, and we hope to build a lot of that into our corporate performance 2.0. And hopefully that will go into the next version of stretch codes and, and into the 20, 2015 IECC and the 2018 IECC. So I wanted to give an appreciation of uh, what we think is a large savings opportunity that we we're finding at this very juncture. Um, the relative energy intensity is roughly equivalent to EYs based on, on CVEX and the other figures are actually modeled EUIs and, and that's really comparing apples to oranges but there is no um, Cuisinart to, to put them into one bucket so uh, we kind of have to keep the apples and oranges on the same on the same chart but as you can see um, the 2000 the gap between the 2006 or the 2004 uh, 90.1 and 2012 actually goes from about 70 down to 50 and so, in an EUI, so there is, that's where the 30% figure comes from. And as you can see, that as a significant savings as we go down to net zero, um, the CBEX number is somewhere up in the upper 90s now based on the 2003 CBEX survey. Um, that is about halfway down. When people talk about net zero buildings, they're not talking about buildings that don't consume energy, they're talking about buildings that consume energy that is offset by, um, renewables and so and that would probably be down somewhere in the 10 to 15 range. So the work that is beyond halfway there um, if we actually get buildings built and performing at the 2012 model levels. Um, but that level of savings is where we think the, these programs or the next cycle stretch codes can be can be implemented. This is another way to look at that. Um, this actually came out of uh, Pam's shop, the, the, the DOE modeling. That's that blue line. Um, the last blue leg down is the, is the, is the blue leg down to 9.1 2010 from 9.1 2007. CBEX is the red dot. Um, we've heard about the architecture 2030 goals. That's, that's the red line. Um, and, the, and the core performance programs we're talking about are the, the vertical um, yellow and purple bars. And so these are, these are the types of savings we we're trying to implement and, and push into the market um, through the REACH codes and the utility programs. To bring it back to numbers, um, this is the actual model for Denver, which is very close um, in climate zone to, to the Chicago climate zone, um, 5A. Um, and these, these, this breaks down the, the savings between these are not official numbers. The <coughs> official determinations are going to be done by PNNL uh, next year, we're told. 
and this is a this is our preliminary modeling of the 2012 proposals on a national basis. But for the for this this uh, specific climate zone, um, you can see the reduction in gas savings is higher than the reduction in in electric savings. But overall, um, it's between 16 and 27 percent, depending on the the building type. Um, so we've heard a lot about already, I won't go through this very much, but this is really, and actually we've heard about Pooja, who we, we tried to, to come here, but this is actually one of her slides, this is credit to National Grid. Um, this is how they are implementing their programs and, and trying to gain attribution from the Public Service Commission in, um, in Massachusetts. Um, and it's a range of trainings and inspections. And, and, and this planning and involvement in the development of the next round of uh, reach codes and then base codes. Um, and we are doing one of the studies for them comparing the, the levels of savings um, between the 20, 2009 and 2012 and we've already made proposed a 2015 stretch code which uh, we hope to start begin drafting in the next two or three months. Um, and, and, and so once they understand what the next reach code is, they intend to, to have their program development oriented around that reach code. Um, and, and before it becomes effective, um, they will get credit for the entire amount of savings. And then once it becomes effective, it will become more of a compliance rate, effect, a compliance rate attribution. But they are clearly orienting um, this big shift from future-oriented uh, programs divorced from codes to future-oriented programs which are completely integrated with code from, from uh, con concept to development to implementation. And, and this is the, the ultimate market transformation strategy. So eventually you're going to go from zero to 100% as these codes uh, get developed and implemented. So what uh, so our support in this effort is the 2012 version of the core performance guide. The original core performance guide did become the Massachusetts stretch code at, at some level. Um, we are developing, we are releasing later in the fall the 2012 IECC supplement. That is what we're going to hope to work with utilities so they can do early implementation. Um, depending, as Isaac said, stretch codes, we also work on the stretch code concept but that is very much jurisdictional dependent. So where there is a jurisdictional option, sometimes that's on a municipal or a city level, sometimes it's on a state level. We think that's a great opportunity, but if it's not, you know, the utility programs can be just as effective. Um, and we are going to hope that the core performance um, works with, can work directly with the program administrators to uh, train and to incent the program that really really brings in the 2012 IECC measures on, on an uh, early basis. And, I mean, you can, this is literally the detail that goes into it. Um, and you can see um, this, this really compares the measures for, for this climate zone, um, basically how they've changed all the way from 2006 uh, and through uh, some of the other programs. And this is the type of information that we can provide to show what kind of change is going on from the current code practice to the uh, 2012 IACC introduction. Oops. And so our, our program, the core performance, is, um, you'll see on the next slide who has adopted it, but it's an integrated, it's a whole building program. Um, the modeling behind the program demonstrates how much savings is involved. Um, it, it, it works directly with the green community because there is a direct um, application for the LEED EA credits. Uh, core performance has been recognized as a compliance option in the EA credits and uh, without modeling. So this allows um, especially smaller buildings to, to earn the earn the um, points and lead without going through the expensive model. And so um, these are the major places where we're, we're working with, with core performance right now. Um, and a lot of them are uh, m most of the major um, public benefit organizations, including Efficiency Maine, Efficiency New Brunswick, 
Efficiency Vermont, Energy Center Wisconsin, Energy Trust of Oregon, and then a lot of uh, um, the, the Massachusetts utilities. Um, and then we're working, um, like I said, we have the prescriptive path in, in Lee. Uh, it did become the Massachusetts stretch code and then further became the 2012 IACC. So, uh, so that's, um, that's the information I have. And um, if anyone wants to learn more about the 2012 IACC core performance, how it's going to work, we actually have, I brought the table of contents to show you the measures that we're going to be including in the guide to explain the implementation of the, of the commercial code. Um, and then we also um, are assisting, you know, it's our jurisdictions that are interested in how to, to put the stretch energy code concept into, um, into effect, uh, you can find that assistance too. So, thank you, Jim.